All righty. Well, it's uh, 8.30 in my neck of the woods. Um, so let's go ahead and get the old show on the road. Um, again, my name is uh, Nathan Graham. I'm the Director of uh, Commercial Services uh, here at RPR. Feel free if you want, jot down my email address. Uh, it's just nathang at narrpr.com. Uh, more than happy after today to kind of uh, help you all out if you get um, you know, to your desktops, you start playing around and uh, you need some assistance that way. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Also, if there's things as you're working in the system that you think can be improved um, or you know, maybe some new data sources or some cool stuff that you uh, think would be interesting to uh, us to take a look at, always love um, getting that feedback as well. So um, with that, the plan for today is really to go through a, a general overview via slides. And then what I'm gonna do is spend most of the time just functioning on some various search functions. Um, we'll show you how to you know, do your typical on-market available space search. Um, we'll look at how to do some comparative uh, comp searches, looking to build out like a break, uh, broker price opinion. Um, and then also we'll, we'll take a look at maybe some farming stuff as well. And then I'll even touch on the site selection just to kind of give you an idea on how you can narrow your search focus for available space or potential investors. So that's the goal of today. Hopefully we can wrap this up in about 30 and um, we'll uh, get everybody on their way. Um, first thing though that I wanna mention um, is the NAR Right Tools Right Now program. Uh, if y'all haven't already checked this out, uh, if you go to realtor, um, or sorry, nar.realtor, I keep wanting to call realtor.org. Um, although if you do type in realtor.org, you will still get to the NAR website. Um, but you can, um, you know, type in the right tools right now. There's just a ton of um, discounts. There's, um, you know, some free stuff. There's training. There's all these different, um, you know, tools that you have access to. Um, and really, it's, it's the program um, that has kind of been resurrected from, um, you know, the last financial crisis back in, what was it, 07, 08, um, where there's just tons of discounts for you all uh, on a lot of things, such as C classes and, and so forth. So, just throwing it out there. Um, if y'all haven't checked it out, uh, I would encourage you to do so and hopefully you'll get some value out of those efforts from NAR. So to kick off the show, I always like to, you know, bring up the fact that, you know, RPR is a wholly owned subsidiary of the National Association of Realtors. Um, what that really means to anybody who is a realtor member or, you know, those who aren't, um, is that, you know, we are exclusive uh, to the realtor community. So there is no um, other way to get into RPR without being a realtor member. Um, and the other cool thing is, you know, because we are already inside of our, or inside of NAR, um, once you pay your NAR dues, um, that's all you have to pay to get access. You know, we're a true benefit of your realtor membership. So everything that we're about to look at today, um, there is no cost. You know, once you become a realtor member, part of your dues is what pays our budget. Um, and so you have access to everything, carte blanche, no, no strings attached, anything like that. Um, really our goal from the onset is to bring as much data and information about the properties and communities that surround them um, that we can um, in order to supplement the local MLSs, the local CIEs, um, and provide you know, some data and some tools that um, you know, honestly can be kind of expensive or you know, maybe just aren't as high a priority. Um, and, you know, bring those into your, your, your kind of workflows. So that's our goal. Ultimately, all this does is help you close some more deals, you know, make some clients happier and that kind of thing. So that's what we're doing. Um, how we go about doing that um, is we start off with uh, public records as kind of our foundation. So um, we have a partnership with a company called Black Knight. They provide us with nationwide public records, which you have access to all of them across residential, commercial, um, there's 50 million or so on the commercial side alone. Um, that does include land, of course, um, but you have access to things like uh, ownership down to the corporate level. Um, you have access to, you know, tax information, um, so on and so forth. Um, full transparency, you know, with the Louisiana market and um, the public record system kind of as it is, um, you know, that is going to limit the amount of information that is available, you know, in your home markets, um, just because if it's not inside of public records, you know, we don't have a research team that's going out there and making phone calls or anything like that to um, supplement the public records. Um, that said, there are ways you can see at the very top of our stack that you can add details about these properties and store those inside of RPR and, and you know, build out your reports and that kind of thing. <clears throat> but just, you know, full transparency, that's how it works. You know, we get public records directly from Black Knight who collects them directly from the municipalities. 
What we do next though, is we combine those listings or those properties with listings. Um, so you uh, see partnerships like, you know, the LACDB, um, they are, you know, a Catalyst uh, user and the listings come from the Catalyst site into RPR and combine with, uh, you know, the public records and, and hopefully gives you a little bit more of a robust, um, you know, data information pool. Um, we also have things like tenant records in there. So, you know, not every, uh, CIE or MLS is going to have a lot of tenant detail. So that's one of those examples of some, you know, added information that you might be able to dig into RPR and do a little bit more research um, for your clients. And I already talked about the your knowledge part of this, you know, there's ample opportunities for you to add details about these properties as well. The other thing that you have access to within RPR is uh, nationwide listing access. So again, uh, the thought is that we can help supplement the local um, CIEs and MLSs y'all are using um, through these partnerships, giving you a little bit of a broader search, broader scope. Um, you know, one of the things that you might run into depending on, you know, what part of Louisiana y'all focus your work on, um, you know, you might not always have uh, comparables that are, you know, exactly one-to-ones, um, especially if you're looking for some on-market stuff. Um, this will give you the ability to, you know, within RPR, not only search locally, but, you know, some similar markets around maybe the Southeast or um, the Gulf Panhandle area. And, you know, look at those other markets and see if there's similar properties that you can then bring into your um, comparative analysis, your broker's opinions, those kind of things. So keep that in mind. And of course, you know, if you have uh, clients that ask you to look for properties outside of your area, um, there's obviously, you know, that on market search as well from this. Um, and just to go through our partners uh, to date, we have Crexi, uh, we have Brevitas, we have TotalCommercial.com, which um, is really big in Florida and with the CCIM uh, group down there, um, all of which share nationwide. There's also for the, the land, the dirt people out there, um, the Land Broker MLS is probably our newest one um, that is now live. Uh, again, nationwide listings through them. Um, and then uh, a little peek behind the curtain, we're actually working with uh, one of NAR's REACH uh, companies called By Proxy. Um, they just purchased, well, not just, it's been uh, since February at this point in time, but uh, I guess time's a flat circle these days. Um, but they purchased a company called OfficeSpace.com and pretty soon their listings will be coming into RPR as well. Um, so that's kind of how the property side of the system works. Um, next up, one of my favorite parts actually is kind of the economic demographic, the research, the site selection stuff. Um, you know, we have a partnership with uh, a company called Esri. Uh, a lot of y'all, no, most of y'all, maybe some of y'all are uh, probably familiar with them. Um, they power the site to do business platform that they don't power it, they built it. Um, but the same data sets that, you know, the CCIM site to do business platform has uh, within it are, you know, inside of RPR for the most part. Um, we use them a little bit differently instead of having, um, you know, the site to do business system um, as a standalone, we incorporate the raw data and bring that into RPR um, so that you can do things like run custom trade air reports or, uh, you know, do the site selection stuff and that kind of thing. So that's how the economic demographics, the consumer segmentations, also known as tapestry segments, come together. Um, we talked about tenant records, but I mean, there's traffic counts on a nationwide basis. There's business points of interest in there. Um, opportunity zones that you can search by and all types of cool stuff like that. So we'll touch on a lot of, or at least some of these uh, here in a bit. A couple of workflow tools. Uh, mentioned this just a second ago, but we have custom trade error reports. Um, this will allow you to drop a pin on a, you know, property or a space or a parcel. Um, and then you set it up. So this one's set for 8 a.m. by car on a Monday um, and a 10 minute drive time. Um, you click on that and it will generate, you know, the 10 minute drive time trade air report for that uh, surrounding uh, community. Um, those insights will be coming from Esri's economic demographic data sets. There's five year projections from the U.S. Census. Um, lots and lots of good stuff in there. Uh, site selection, we'll, we'll touch on this one here in a bit. Again, this utilizes the Esri economic demographic data. Um, you can target, as you can kind of see here, this is a senior care development um, kind of makeup that I've been using uh, for a while now, but basically you look for seniors with a median net worth who own a home, and then I always factor in a little bit of the healthcare spending. Um, and the real goal behind this is instead of looking for, in this case, you know, my neck of the woods, the Portland, Oregon area, um, you can actually look at very specific areas within, you know, a larger geography. So same thing, you know, you're searching for on-market properties. If you know where you want to be, you might as well try to look for the spaces that match that need um, off the get-go and then you can kind of broaden from there if there's nothing available at that time. Uh, investment analysis, uh, Valuate is our partnership 
um, with, uh, with this. Um, basically what you can do is a two to 10 year hold analysis on an unlevered and a levered basis. Um, it's it's kind of like your Excel spreadsheets. Uh, it's just that they run, you know, in the background. Um, everything updates, uh, you know, almost instantaneously for the most part. Um, and you can have up to five different analysis stored in your profile at one time at no cost. Um, so it's a really powerful system. If you you know happen to work with investors, which I imagine a lot of y'all do, um, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, again, for the land folks out there, there are these back of the envelope calculations as well. Um, where you can look at, you know, development projects um, based on, you know, FAR um, or unit mix um, and kind of see what the, uh, you know, penciled out economic performer might look like um, for an industrial building project or something like that. So <clears throat> lots of stuff there. Probably won't get into the investment analysis stuff today, but there's always uh, training available online. If y'all haven't created your account, <clears throat> you can go to NARRPR.com, um, walk through our really quick process. Um, the key is, you know, we need your nerds information. If you know it, you can type it in. If you don't know it, we'll look it up for you through the email process. Um, but that tells us you're an active realtor. Um, then you want to just add that you're a member of an MLS or CIE. So, you know, I imagine since this is the LACDB uh, webinar, a lot of y'all are members of LACDB. Um, so make sure um, if you've created your RPR account that you have um, the LACDB as one of your subscriptions. Um, if you're a member of the MLS is around there uh, as well, you can add those. And you know that's a cool feature as well. You can search um, both feeds um, within one um, search and add in all of those national feeds as well. So we have a mobile app if you haven't downloaded that. Again, there's no cost, App Store, Google Play. Um, we can also rebrand our website with your logos. Um, somebody with a marketing background like myself, I find a lot of value in this. Um, so if you go into RPR and you see, you know, our logo up there or um, maybe your MLS's or your CIE's logo, um, but you don't see your brokers, um, I would highly encourage you all to go through our broker um, tool enrollment. Again, there's no cost. Um, and what that will do is it will, uh, you know, tie your office and the agents under your office um, through our MLS and CIE partnerships. Um, to your logo and that way as agents come and go um, they can automatically get rebranded and anybody that logs into RPR will have that branding set up so it's pretty cool um, lots of training online I'll point that out maybe towards the end here so if y'all want to dive into some um, deeper details about RPR um, you're able to do so um, I'll show you where the customer support information is but we do have 24 7 365 customer support um, they're based out of Omaha. They're actually employed by uh, RPR and they are, you know, tested on the system on a regular basis. So they are pretty knowledgeable about most things. I won't say they're an expert on all things, but um, if you do have any questions from, you know, creating your account all the way through how to use Valuate, um, start with them. And then, um, you know, if, if, if we need to kind of um, take it to the next tier, we can definitely do that from that point as well. But it's a great way to kind of figure out, uh, you know, what's working, what's not working. Also, if you have enhancement ideas, they're, they're a great resource to add those. They, those get kind of queued up within our process as well. All right, so enough with the boring PowerPoint. Let's jump into uh, the actual platform and let's go through a couple of um, maybe not fun examples, but um, some interesting things. So I'm going to assume most of y'all have probably seen the system uh, a little bit here and there. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole uh, page here. What I'm going to do is jump into our search function. Um, and this will, you know, obviously be pretty familiar for most of y'all. Um, the only, you know, thing on search that I always want to point out is up here at the top. Just make sure when you log in that you're doing the search you want to do. So if you're looking or want to look at, you know, for sale properties, make sure it's not set to for lease, that it's set to for sale. The system tends to remember the last thing you did. Um, so there have been occasions where, you know, somebody's called into tech support because, you know, they're trying to find on market properties or off market properties. And all they're seeing are things that are for sale or things that are for lease or, you know, they're seeing everything and they don't want everything. So um, keep that in mind. Um, this is kind of how you set the system up as far as searches. Um, so I'm going to do probably the most basic thing that, you know, what I would imagine a lot of y'all do when you come into a new system is look for properties that are for sale in your local market. So um, I don't know if anybody here is, uh, you know, old enough to remember when we first came through and did some trainings. One of the things that uh, a lot of requests were made for was being able to type in a parish and actually search by it. Um, so that is a, a new thing. Uh, well, it's been around for about a year now, but um, 
but the one thing that I actually noticed while um, preparing for this class is if you type it all the way in and hit search, for some reason it, it searches a weird radius, but if you just, whenever you're typing, if you'll select um, the kind of computer loaded version, that will hold the uh, parish. So I, I already put that in as a bug um, that, that will get fixed. I'm not sure when that happened, but um, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting that it does. Um, so just make sure you select the, the parish down here when it drops down um, and you'll be good to go. Um, so of course, you know, if we're doing a for sale search, we could do things like filter, you know, price range, lot size, building size, um, year built, any of those details. If you have keywords that you want to plug in like a zoning, it'll search through public record zoning. But again, keep in mind, um, if the zoning isn't a part of a public record, even if it is zoned that way, um, it's going to remove that listing um, from your search. So um, just be aware, filtering is not always the best thing. I usually start off a little broad, um, kind of like this, and then I will narrow my search down based on, you know, if I'm overwhelmed with properties. So for instance, 869 properties, I probably don't want to, you know, sort through all of these, you know, especially if I'm looking for something specific like retail. Um, so let's say that I do want retail and I want, you know, at a specific size, 3,000 to 5,000 square foot. And hopefully, you know, the listing agents, you know, likely put that in as a key characteristic. Um, but we click apply now. And now we have 10 different properties that we can kind of filter through. Um, and so, you know, the very basic search process, you know, this probably looks very familiar to you. You see a property that, you know, maybe the price point matches, the square footage matches, you know, it's a newer building. So that's kind of intriguing. Um, we can then jump into the actual property here. Um, and you can see this is actually um, a, a bank. Um, so we can then kind of take a look at this and see, um, you know, if this is a property based on the agent descriptions, um, based on any public facts and listing facts that we have uh, available to us. Um, the other thing that I want to point out um, is with the uh, nationwide partnerships, um, you can see where listings are coming from over here. So if this was listed by uh, an agent within the LACDB, um, you know, uh, community, um, you would see the LACDB uh, option here as well. Um, right now we have two versions of this listing. So keep that in mind, you know, because we have uh, various partners, um, we do have, you know, duplicates of listings, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, sometimes agents uh, typically are going to put more information through the CIEs um, or the MLSs just because there's more rules um, around those. Um, but there are some, some neat things you can do. Like, for instance, if you come across a listing that is listed on Brevitas, one thing that's neat is we have these links back to their site. Um, so you can actually jump into the Brevitas site here. And the reason that I like to point people um, back to the originator of listings is sometimes there are, um, you know, uh, PDFs um, that are available um, that obviously can't be sent to us via an FTP. So even on the LACDB site, you know, y'all might be able to upload PDFs that um, are important. So just kind of keep that in mind um, that those are going to be available. And if you do start your searches on, you know, Brevitas, for instance, you can actually jump into RPR. Um, if you're signed in as a realtor. So I always encourage folks to kind of, you know, use um, our system as, you know, almost a jumping off point to understand kind of what the basic, if you have more, combine details to inform the middle As far as for sale and on market stuff kind of goes. Now, um, let's actually, let me back out here. We'll go back to the, uh, the home page. This time, let's go into search. And what we will do is we will actually um, do kind of a, a broader search here. So, so we can um, go to an all property search and it will allow us access to off market properties. So let's go to a different area. Let's go to uh, New Orleans kind of parish there. And say that, um, let's say that we want to look for office space that has sold within the last, you know, certain amount of time. So let's say that we want to look for office space that has sold within the last year. 
we can come down here to one year. You know, the other thing you can do is, you know, if you want to look for things that have sold within the last 30 days or 60 days, um, because, you know, things are getting um, pretty crazy, uh, you know, maybe a little uh, different, I guess, if there's a um, kind of reconsideration on pricing right now with everything that's kind of going on. Um, so you can narrow your search down to 30, 60 days if you wanted to. Um, let me make this a little bit of a smaller map. So now we have 43 different properties that have sold within the last year. Again, if we wanted to narrow this down to you know, 60 days, 90 days, we could definitely do that to have more recent comps. Um, but this is a great way to kind of go through the system um, and just try to identify any office space that kind of matches um, our own um, properties and see you know, if it's uh, one that we can pull out and use within our broker's price opinion. Um, so again, just jumping into the details here, you can see the sold price, the sold date, um, price per square foot. Um, here's some tenant information. There's the owner details. You know, another thing you can do is if you have a building that you're trying to list and maybe it's nearby, um, you can go and see what, uh, you know, corporations have been buying properties in that area. And maybe, uh, you know, you'll have to do a little bit of due uh, diligence in order to kind of, you know, pierce the corporate veil, as they say. Um, but you can use this as a way to say, all right, you know, let me try to build some um, people in my, my Rolodex that, um, might be interested in these spaces that I'm kind of working on. So that's another great uh, utilization of um, the uh, public records there. Um, then we also have some tenants information here and, you know, kind of like we've looked at earlier, property facts and details, legal descriptions, tax info, deed records. And of course, you know, over here, this is your changes. You can add new information here as well. So if you wanted to put in something like parking spaces, maybe there's 10 of them hit the save button. And now that's going to be on the site here as well. Um, you can also update, you know, if there's been additions that aren't in public records that need to be, or, you know, if you know the number of units, you can plug those in there as well. So kind of like I was saying at the beginning, um, you know, this is, you know, our best attempt is bringing as much information about these properties into kind of one stop shop. But we do know that y'all are the experts and y'all are going to be able to pull even more information out. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities for y'all to do just that. Okay, um, so that's, you know, kind of a looking for um, some comp type of things. Let's say, though, instead, let me flip this around. Let's say that we're actually going to look for a uh, potential clients. So we're doing a little bit of farming, maybe. So what I'm telling the system right now is I've selected date range. And what I'm saying is I want to find properties that, you know, sold in 2010 that are multifamily. Um, that have not sold since then. Now I could, you know, again, I could narrow this down. I could narrow it down by units. One thing I have noticed through um, doing some research for this is, you know, there's not often a lot of unit information um, within the public records uh, in this area. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but again, you know, 796 properties, that might be a little bit much for me to kind of um, go through. So here's something that I like to do, um, especially nowadays, uh, we can zoom in just a, a scotch. All the maps, just so you're aware, they all function the same. They all have heat map layers. They all have, you know, the map pins to use, um, the uh, custom trade area reports. They also all have these geographies where you can then turn on opportunity zones. And then we can let's just zoom in kind of on the downtown -y area here. We can select these opportunity zones as, as I am, you know, selecting them up here in the top right hand corner you're now able to search in those specific geographies. So once you've selected however many of these you want, we can then do a search for just those 12 geographies. And one thing that I, I did notice, so sometimes the uh, residential income um, designation from, from property records does come in. Um, and if you wanna kind of eliminate those, one thing I notice is if you plug in, you know, a larger square footage, a lot of the smaller properties will kind of fall out. Oh, that was maybe too large. <laughs> Let's back that up a little bit to maybe 4,000. There we go. So you can see these, this will illuminate some of those smaller properties that we might not be as interested in, but um, definitely a, a neat way to kind of dive into details and see, um, you know, if there's some potential uh, clients that you might be able to reach out to. You know, the other thing you can do um, at this point because we do not pierce that corporate veil with our um, tax data. Um, we can go in here and select mailing labels. And of course, you know, 
many of y'all would use this as just what it says to create mailing labels. But what I use it for, what I teach it on is export this information into a CSV. You have up to 2000 um, per month. And what that's going to do for you is it gives you at least a starting point, in my opinion, um, to begin, you know, building out these details. So, you know, we only had a couple here, but, you know, right here, this one is apparently held within a uh, individual's name. So we could reach out to them, you know, um, directly. Um, but for, you know, Valmont and property consolidation, you might just want to add a couple of rounds of, you know, here are the corporate contacts. Um, you could also add details like, you know, number of units, um, square footage, um, so on and so forth. So as you're, you know, doing research within RPR, you can begin to build out your own kind of um, spreadsheet and database and build upon that. And you can, you know, create certain tabs for the various areas with, uh, in your marketplace. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff, obviously y'all have been doing this longer than I have um, as far as building up a uh, potential client list. Um, so you know kind of how this might, would uh, play into it, but I thought that was kind of a neat, you know, idea as far as um, utilizing the uh, mailing labels in a way that you can actually start to um, create your own databases and, you know, understand your markets even a little bit better and build some, some basic um, data sets that way. So let's see, we have, oh man, five minutes left. Um, let me show y'all one other really quick kind of tip trick type of thing. It's not really a, a trick by any means because it's built into the system, but um, if you come here to the analysis, um, first of all, for, again, I'm a big fan of transparency, um, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, these data tools down here, um, the best business, um, which is also known as a retail gap analysis, um, this would allow you to do some site selection, identify on a you know, bricks and mortar competitive basis, um, what was lacking and what was oversaturated. Um, Esri uh, in the last two years has deprecated this. And so while it's still in our system, um, it hasn't been updated in two years. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking at the retail gap analysis um, tools. Um, to be perfectly honest though, I'm, I didn't really ever teach on those anyways, because to me, um, it makes a lot more sense to use um, this one, just because uh, this, you know, these look at competition demand on strictly bricks and mortar, but this looks at drivers of demand. So you can still use this tool for retail, but you can also use it for looking for an employee base or um, you know, looking for, like I did earlier, um, you know, a type of renter, you know, senior care uh, facility type of thing. So I've always taught on this one just because it's more dynamic and I think it's a little bit more flexible. Um, so with all of that caveat, um, I just wanna kind of show you what this might look like. So if you want to narrow your search down, um, you know, before looking at all the properties within, uh, you know, the Shreveport area, um, you can do that by factoring in specific, you know, guidelines here, or attributes. So, you know, maybe we're looking at some, you know, warehousing opportunity and we want to be around, uh, you know, a certain income per capita. We want to understand the retail spending in the area. And then we also want to look at the household growth rate. So what we can do now is do things like who they are. And the neat thing about this is when you select one, you get kind of a, uh, you know, waterfall effect. So each one kind of opens up and there's more options there. So there is so much information that you can kind of, um, you know, target search by. Um, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll factor in the income per capita. And if you're curious where the information comes from, um, all these little question marks will give you what it is, where it came from and how often we get it updated. So let's click okay there. Um, next up, let's look at um, total retail spending. So we'll look at what they buy. And again, just tons and tons of information here um, that you can utilize. Um, we'll do all retail, click on OK. We'll add another bit of criteria here. And then let's look at, um, we'll look at some past uh, growth rate. There are some other options. We could do things like, you know, daytime population density. We could do total density. We could do, you know, home ownership status renter status, income trends, population trends. There's, there's a lot of different options here. Um, but for, for this example, I'll just come here, 2010 to 2019 household growth rate. Click OK. And you can do up to five. I'm just going to do these three um, just because we're, we're kind of running out of time here. Um, but the way it works is, you know, the darker the purple, the better the fit. Um, the one thing that I will say is I, I prefer using things like zip codes. Uh, mostly because, you know, not every part of the parish here um, has a boundary of a city. 
um, but they will all have boundaries of zip codes. And it also gives you some nice clustering effects here as well. So, you know, maybe I want to do my search kind of focused in on that cluster. Let me see which one this is and I'll exclude. Okay, I'll take Bethany out. So we'll go Belcher, Gillum, and Hostin. And we could select, you know, maybe these up here if we wanted to, but, you know, for this example, uh, we can then jump into a listing search or, you know, we could even do an all property search if we wanted to. Um, and, you know, from there, this will allow you to do multiple things. You know, you can, um, at this point in time, you know, look for, um, you know, applying what we just kind of covered. You can look for obviously available space for sale for lease. Um, you could also look for uh, potential clients using, you know, our sold date range here or um, look for comps using the um, sold date within uh, time period uh, tool here as well. So um, with that, um, it is nine o'clock or actually 901. So I've, I've already taken one minute extra of your time, which I do apologize for. Um, but um, if y'all have any questions um, at this point, I'd be more than happy to kind of hang around and do a little Q&A session with you. Um, if, uh, you know, you, you need to kind of move along with the day, I definitely understand that. Um, I will point out two really quick things for you. Um, down here at the very bottom, this is where our 24-7 customer support can be reached. Um, if you want to do more training, um, you can go to um, our blog page and then come up here to learning. And then I always suggest the Watch Now webinars just because you can watch these anytime, any day. Um, and the only downside of them is that you have to listen to me uh, again through all of that whole process. But um, I really do hope that y'all have seen some value um, in how RPR can supplement uh, you know, your LACDB um, um, port or, uh, platform. Um, and if there are questions, uh, see one just popped up. Can you cover any other comp for us in New Orleans? Um, sure, uh, Jared, uh, what, what kind of comp are you looking for? I guess would be my question. Or I can just go through a generic one, I guess, really quickly as well. Um, yeah, so let me go back. We'll go back to the home page. We'll go to search. And again, if you're looking for comparative properties or if you're looking for uh, potential um, clients, you just want to make sure that it's set to all properties. Uh, industrial Air Dom Dalman Road. Um, okay, uh, I, so I'm not going to be as familiar with where Dalman Road is. Um, to be honest with you. Let me just set this up and then you'll be able to apply it um, kind of as you uh, see fit. And market analysis. I'm not sure what you mean by market analysis. If you mean the economic demographic trader report, I can definitely do that for you as well. But all right, let me let me rock and roll here. So um, for New Orleans, we'll, we'll go We'll just go into the city. Well, actually, I'm not sure if that industrial area is in the city or if it's outside. So we'll just do the parish level. And what we can do now is we can set it up to industrial. Um, what I might suggest, we'll, we'll run this search really quickly. Um, but sometimes, I'm doing the last year, sometimes um, properties get labeled as commercial. Um, you know, it's kind of a safety net, you know, maybe it's a mixed use, maybe it's warehouse industrial, maybe it's retail warehouse, um, something like that. So let's see if we apply commercial to it. Yeah, so a couple more properties are populating. And then you would just have to kind of determine whether or not there are any um, of these that are industrial. This one kind of looks like it might be industrial there. Um, so that is one of the downsides of, you know, the, the uh, municipal collection process. If they don't label things as, you know, specific sectors, um, then they come to us as just general commercial. Um, but what I would probably do in your situation, again, I'm not exactly sure where the industrial district is per se, um, but I would try to kind of narrow down with the map. Again, you would know, you know, more likely where um, these properties would lie, but if, you know, for instance, it's somewhere along here, um, you could jump into these properties one by one through the map. Oh, that's definitely not industrial space, but I think you kind of get the idea of how this would work. 
Um, it would just take a little bit more um, knowledge about your local area than I have in order to identify what part of you know, town it is. One thing I would do is keep this redo search as map moves um, set up and then you can just kind of click them that way or as you're moving the map along, um, obviously the list down here is going to update as well. And then you could jump into properties. And honestly, it might be easier just to look at them all at one time and kind of see what's going on. But same process, we would, you would see you know, the sales price and the sales dates. New Orleans East, okay, cool. Yeah, hopefully I kind of showed you how that, how that would work. Um, I apologize, I'm, I'm not from that area. <laughs> so it's not as easy for me to kind of determine that. But you know, that's how I would go about it. I would use, um, you know, set up, you know, commercial, I'd leave that checked. And then if you have a specific property type, um, I would narrow it down that way. And then what I would do is just use the map to narrow in on whatever area I'm looking for. And then I would probably come down here to get a little quick visual of each of those. You know, the other thing you can do is change these around. So if you want to look at all of these at one time, you can say show 50. Um, you can also look at recently updated. Building size might be another thing, especially for industrial. Um, so you can see right when I flip that up, you know, industrial buildings tend to pop up because they're, they're a lot bigger uh, typically than a lot of other space. So, you know, a couple little tricks like that. Um, it's not, you know, perfect, uh, I will say, but there are ways that you can speed the process along just by a couple of filters and resorting things. All right, um, let's see. I don't see any other questions at this time. Um, I'll tell you what though, I will, oh, you're very welcome. Um, I will do one last thing for you, um, just because I, I think you mentioned a market uh, analysis report and, you know, we don't really have uh, you know, a market analysis type of report, but what we do have are those custom trade areas. And on the maps here, um, you can create like a distance tool. So once you find maybe a property that um, you wanna look for a, a comp, um, or maybe you're reaching out to their clients, you wanna tell them a little bit about their space, you can set this up. You know, there's a five mile radius, click on create the trade area report, click on okay. And you can see here all the different details. So you have trade area summaries, you have Esri's tapestry segmentation, population comparisons, age comparisons, marital status, economic demographic, you know, all the types of stuff that you would, um, you know, want to, you know, use in promoting a space as well as um, to understanding whether a client should invest in one and if, you know, it matches with um, what their needs and wants are. And so with that report, you can kind of see what it looks like here. This is obviously a different area, but lots and lots of details about the community that surrounds those properties. Looks like I have one more question. Oh, you wanted the broker. Yeah, we don't, we don't have a broker price opinion um, report um, per se, but you know, what you would do is kind of like what we showed, which is, you know, identify properties um, that are, you know, would fit within your broker's price opinion. Um, and, and kind of roll those into your own uh, reports. All right. I don't see any other questions. Uh, again, you know, I really do appreciate everybody hopping on uh, today's webinar. Hopefully you, you saw some, some new things, maybe a couple different ideas on how you might be able to use RPR. Um, I believe that there are some links within LACDB that can take you from uh, LACDB into RPR if you want to use us for um, some supplemental research or to pull out some, some demographic to help, uh, you know, with your own listings. Um, definitely, you know, do that. And of course, um, shoot me an email, nathang at narrpr.com if you all have any questions or, um, you know, if there are things that we could do to improve uh, you know, the workflows or, um, you know, how we can uh, make your lives easier. We're always looking for that. So thank you all again so much. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take care.